must be dumpers Free dump dump, now you dumpers You just sound like the others See what original Good morning what? rockers I just wanted to show you what is possible without a studio to speak of uh, this morning I just wanted to give you an idea of what kind of work I'm going to be doing while I don't have a mixer. Uh, I don't have any um, uh, electronic instruments and I don't even have my MIDI key keyboard plugged in. So I can't do anything with MIDI, I can't uh, record anything and I can't even use a mixer. But of course anyone who's an engineer or anyone who's got friends who are vocalists always has work to do. And uh, at the moment I'm doing a project with The Master from uh, Brisbane, Australia. But I don't think he's living in Brisbane at the moment. I don't know where he is. I think he might be in Melbourne. Uh, but anyway, uh, The Master and I go back about 20 years. And uh, he decided that he'd like to do a project um, with 3OB. And 3OB is from the Australian Capital Ter Territory. The ACT, uh, that's Canberra. The, the, the capital of Australia and um, 3OB is someone I've never worked with before but uh, luckily yeah I've got the chance now all right so what happened was uh, I called the master and I said I've got this uh, beat this uh, rhythm uh, it's called get high because I dropped in a vocal sample in three or four places in the song uh, just before the breakdowns where it says I like to get high I like to get high so I didn't know what to do with it um, I sort of offered it to some other guys, like some African guys. Um, they, it was not strictly reggae, so they weren't really that up for it. And then I thought the master is someone who I've never worked with before, uh, but I've had some opportunities to work alongside uh, while he's been performing, or I've been a supporting act uh, while he's been uh, performing on stage. So I've known him for a long time. Uh, I've been uh, to a few of his places where he's lived and uh, he's always had a great setup with all the, the, the turntables uh, set up um, you know all of the the music at hand and there's always a great vibe when you're working with Jason uh, Liam is 3OB I never worked with him before but it's great to be able to, to correspond with people uh, via email or chat or whatever and the real important thing is that um, when you don't know someone like me not knowing uh, Liam, 3OB, uh, the important point here is the, the, the point of contact, and the point of contact is Jason, and I have a lot of respect for Jason, uh, so therefore I automatically transfer my respect for Jason to this next person that I'm going to work with, uh, because as far as I know, uh, they're mates, and I'm mates with him, so we should all get along swimmingly. Also, we're all Australian. Even though I've been living here in Austria for the last eight years, and I was in Hungary, in Budapest, for about eight years as well, um, I still like to keep in contact with the local boys. It, it keeps me real, and it gives me a really great perspective on what I'm doing with my music, if I can check back every now and again with some guys in Oz, and see what they're doing. Um, I don't know if you want to see, but uh, there's basically no equipment. Um... There's my computer about to get packed up. That's the box the keyboard will go into. Uh, there's my green tea. Some uh, paperwork songs I'm working on. Uh, you know, basically just important info. The last few cables I need to pack away are still on the table. And uh, a couple of empty boxes for things that need to get packed up when it's time to go. I've still only got this very small monitor so don't uh, think that you need to get giant monitors to get the work done. Um, I did go out and buy one of these uh, um, Ableton keyboards that has the the keys already or the shortcut keys already on it but personally I do not like the Ableton shortcut key keyboard uh, it, it, it is too sensitive when you, you scoot your finger over to touch another key it accidentally touches other keys and, and types text without you wanting to do it I am not a fan of the Ableton edition key or editors keys keyboard but I keep it because it has all the shortcuts for using Ableton uh, I want to show you what I'm doing 
And the thing is, I, w I didn't really want to film it because I thought, who the hell wants to see me clicking away on a computer monitor? The thing is, I don't even need, whoops, running. Uh, I don't even need headphones at this point. Uh, of course, you should always have some monitoring. I don't have speakers, as you can see, they're already packed up. Um, I do use these, which I'm a fan of, I will do a review of. Uh, about 100 bucks, 120 bucks. Good monitors, but um, what I'm doing right now is working on this tune I was just talking about with uh, Jason and Liam, and it's called Get High. You can't hear it, but that's not what's important. I want to show you on the screen what's going on. So I have to unbuckle this bad boy. I'm not sure if you can see it, I'll try to zoom in a bit. Oops, zoom in a bit. And give you a look at what these spikes look like. I'm sure you can start to see them as you zoom in. Damn it. As you, as you zoom in more and more, they become more apparent. These huge spikes. And I hope that the, the screen isn't strobing right now, because it is through the monitor. But uh, So you can see these spikes in the vocal. I'm not sure if you can hear the vocal. I can... Shit. I'll chop off the front of this because it has a giant empty piece. Uh, it's not necessary, but I'll leave the empty piece at the back. Alright, so you might be able to hear it through the monitors. Sure. I don't know where the speakers are on this camera. to make clothes and rope. Let's not forget that it is cure and disease. THC and CDB has been a miracle to me, believe me. But let's get back to the... Alright, so I'm not sure if you heard anything just then. But there are a few words that sort of spike out of the rest of the... the rest of the verse. You can really see some high points there. And uh, my job at the beginning is to take out these high points which are obviously uh, too loud or too sibilant. Uh, maybe it's air being uh, pushed into the diaphragm of the microphone too much. For example, this big bastard here. Clearly a lot of energy because it's so solid. When it's really solid like that, there's a lot of electrical power pushing through the monitor or through the speaker. And when I try to mix this tune, this spike here is going to be a real pain in the ass. I should be listening to every single thing that I'm doing, <sighs> technically, but really, uh, I've been doing this for so long, I do the first run just by eye. If I'm not sure what I'm listening to, uh, I'll listen in on the headphones for every single sample, but when I look at something this huge and this fat, I know it's too loud. I can just see it's too loud. As soon as I try and put that in the mix, there's going to be a big spike when this word comes out. I could listen to the word right now, but you won't be able to hear it. So I'll just skip that part. Alright, uh, process, volume, I'll take it down 1.68 dB, so 82% of the original. Okay, I'll just make it smaller. If it's still pretty big and looks at, it is still pretty big in there, I do it a couple of times. But I don't go down directly to say 60% or something because it might be too much. All I do is I just repeat volume a few times. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So even if that's a word that's going to be stressed, it's not going to stand out as much as it did before. Here again is a big fat lump. And <laughs> I know everyone will be saying you should be listening to every single thing you're doing, but I can just tell electrically that that's a very loud signal. And I'll bring that down as well. I just keep doing repeat volume as to 88%. So it just goes down a tiny bit. Uh, I'll probably do it to a few more things along the line because I can see that there's a, a few words here that are quite large. I'm doing this one hand, by the way. And then once it gets to sort of a, uh, a level that I think looks harmonious, <laughs> so I'm mixing by eye. Everyone says don't do it, but it's only my first stage, all right? It's only about the power and the energy. I don't chop anything off. I don't noise gate. Uh, I don't use any EQ at this point, but definitely I want to get rid of these huge portions like that. And then when you look back, or sort of zoom out I should say, that big thing that was there before, 
it's just not there anymore. You might see remnants of it, but it will become more even. I'm not going to make every single blob here into a perfect um, attenuation to minus 3 dB. That's where this green line is. Uh, but what I will do is when I see something really huge, like this thing here, I'll zoom in. And I just get to it, you know, like you can see how much bigger that word is than anything else. Um, I don't want to chop off the first part of the word, so I just take the very big boom that comes after it, and I reduce it by 80%, or I reduce it to 80%. It's still quite large. I'll bring it down again. Alright, so you can see what I'm doing here. It's very simple. Uh, at this point, you don't really need to listen. Oh, look at that bad boy. <laughs> you don't need to listen to every single thing. Of course, you should be listening as you go, but I don't want to tire my ears out. And for the initial stage, I know I can go through, take a few of these big, loud portions, and just basically reduce the volume. So I reduce it only by, what is it here? like 82, so I did it only in a mono track for some reason. Um, whoops. It does help to uh, be very specific where you're cutting because if you just chop wherever you want you might hear the fluctuations in the sound that you're not wanting to hear. Um, here, just repeat the volume. Yep, I think it's like 82% I'm doing. And then you can see already it starts to fit in. It doesn't need to be as low as everything else because maybe these words are really important. But as you see, I zoom out and everything's starting to look more uniform. It's at this point that I will uh, probably... I mean, I'll be more thorough. I'll go in and I'll check everything with the headphones. But uh, at this point, I'll usually give it an EQ. I have a special graphic EQ that I preset. That's my vocal bass cut I just preset this all I do is I chop off the very very bottom of the uh, sound energy which we don't need anyway and then there'll be a slight modification in the look alright so that's my basics I take off the major peaks that I see here and once the major peaks are down I'll give it an EQ where I chop off the bottom so it's a high pass filter I chop off everything below about, say, 80, um, 80 hertz, all the way down. It's unnecessary to have a sub bass in the vocal unless you're going for an effect. So I don't do it. Uh, and then from this point, there's some more effects I like to put on. I don't want to do it all at once, uh, but this is the preliminary video to show you how basically I get started when someone gives me a vocal. I'll go in fix up the big uh, spikes and then uh, just take off the base. As you can see it's looking a lot more even. Yeah there are some parts that are a bit bigger than others. I'm going to go back in and have a proper listen. The important thing is that the starts of words shouldn't explode uh, and often the breaths in between uh, verses I leave them in. Some people like to chop them out but I like to leave the breaths in because it sounds uh, synchronous to the music and therefore it's not a bad way to uh, sort of let the vocals sound more natural alright it's just been a very very short chat but at the moment I'm working on a tune called Get High with the Master and 3OB this is all I can do right now uh, I mean it's not all I can do but uh, I can mix I can mix uh, the vocals, uh, I've got 3OB's vocals, uh, this is the master's vocals right now. Um, I just go through, pull down the peaks, take out the bass, and that's the very first stage before I give it any real uh, effects processing. So this kind of processing, just with the EQ and bringing down the volume on, on spikes, this is only... Um, I don't want to say window dressing, it's not window dressing, it's just, just really the foundation of getting an even signal. After this point, I'll, uh, in another video, I'll show you what I do to boost the signal of the vocal and to give it some real clarity so you can hear it over the music. 
that's always an issue when you're mixing vocals uh, into songs that the vocals are never really loud enough or they're too loud uh, so it's really difficult to get that right balance uh, I'll talk about that in the next video but anyway I just wanted to cover those two points bring down your peaks chop out your bass and although some people might disagree with the way I'm doing it meaning I'm not wearing headphones right now I'm just doing it visually I'm just trying to save my ears for this afternoon because I know I've got a lot of mixing to do and uh, when it comes down to you know, brass tacks I will go in and listen to every single line every single word I don't think I'm done here but I'll go through and uh, what has to happen in this video uh, sorry in this um, uh, track is that I have to take the swear words and flip them over so when he says the F word the F word will be said backwards of a earth uh, which will leave the same amount of space in the song so that the vocal doesn't go out of time but I don't want to put in a beep or a bleep because it's too obvious what that is and it's not even funny really to have a beep in the middle of a noise playing in a big club yeah. so we just reverse the F word uh, and I gotta get in close with the headphones and really see what I'm doing there otherwise really be careful of your pops your, your p p p people really want to get up close and personal to the microphone when they're rappers don't know why but they want to make love to the, the spit guard and therefore the, the sound is usually quite uh, attacking you know it, it has a lot of punch uh, and that's some of the stuff I'm bringing down here is the punchy parts of the song where he's really like puh, 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 puh. and it, it sounds uh, explosive these things are called plosives because they actually push against the diaphragm of the microphone uh, and actually hinder it from working properly if you have these problems I would actually recommend let the singer step take one step back from the mic you know like a foot from the mic and still sing the song you don't have to be all up in it you can move closer for the intimate parts of the song you can step back for the louder parts of the song that way you would keep a more even uh, volume uh, so you can be close for the, the whispered verses and, and stand back for the yelled choruses uh, you'll get you'll get a more basic or more even uh, volume over the whole track and therefore the sound engineer uh, doesn't have to do so much work when it comes down to mixing it because you as a vocalist might have done your part uh, and sort of worked with the microphone but again having a good engineer and the singer work together you'll get the best possible result the singer can't do everything alone and neither can the engineer so we got to work together and uh, and that's just my lesson for today all right it's not a lesson it's just a chat uh, this is how I do it this is how I get started um, if someone sends me a vocal I go through make the volume even take out the bass and then I give it some effects in my next video I'll show you what those effects are so stay tuned to John Green on more bass workspace subscribe if you haven't already hit like hit the bell hit whatever you like um, but don't be late for the next video there'll be another one coming out very soon so stay tuned right here you must be dumpers pre dump dump now you dumpers you just sound like the others see what original that's what, that's what.